Hello and welcome to video four on the Introduction to MATLAB video series. This is the fourth and final video. In this video, we're going to go over a cluster genes example, a predictor importance random forest example. Both of these are from MathWorks, so thank you MathWorks for making these publicly available, as well as go over where to find additional resources. So switching over to our MATLAB page, we, this is an example of machine learning. We're going to go ahead and load our data set for filtered yeast data set. Set of reproducibility. Now we're going to go ahead and run a cluster analysis using yeast values. So I can double click into the yeast values really quick to get an idea what this looks like. We have the times and then the different genes. We go ahead and use a max cluster of 16. And I want to go ahead and generate a figure to look at the hierarchical clustering of the profiles. So we get an idea of the different profiles here. We can go ahead and look at the score and variance explained. We use a P or principal components analysis and look at how many components account for the most amount of variance. Looking at this visual, combining both component one and component two account for more than 90% of the variability. We're going to go ahead and retain the first two principal components by using score. Now we're going to go ahead and look at the centroids using k-means. We'll use the two different clusters for that. I'm going to set k-means to 6. And we're going to go ahead and add the labels. We're going to label one gene in each of the different clusters. There we go. Just to get an idea of what it looks like, we can also just like all other MATLAB images and figures, we can go ahead and explore some of the different observations here. You know, let us know what group they've, that we think they're part of. The X and Y coordinates, which X is going to be the first principal component, Y is going to be the second principal component, and the observation number in the data set. We're going to switch gears now and look at predictor importance with the random and forest. And this is again, brought to you by MathWorks. We're going to load the CARBIG data. We're going to change our cylinders, model year, and origin all to categorical using the categorical function. As we can see here, we have acceleration, cylinders, displacement, horsepower, manufacturer, model, model year, MBG, origin, and so forth. We're going to go ahead and combine this as a table. And let's go ahead and pull up X just to see what it looks like. So we have our cylinders, displacement, horsepower, weight, acceleration, model year, and country of origin. Good. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and count the levels for each of the categorical variables. Store that as a variable. I'm going to go ahead and create a bar chart for that to get an idea. This shows us that the variable with the largest number of levels among it is weight, which makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and use tree template and run a random forest. We will then use OBB or OOB predict on our model that we stored to get y hat and then get the r squared, which is about 87. Use the OOB permuted predictor of importance. Now we're going to go ahead and run a bar chart looking at the unbiased predictor importance estimates and model year. And this one is the most important. We're also going to use predictive importance to get the gain in predictive association. Okay. 
And then from this, we're going to go ahead and visualize the OB permuted and the MSE improvement for each of the different predictor variables with our very importance on the y-axis. Then we can go ahead and look at predictor associations. So when we run this, we're going to go ahead and essentially get a heat map of the correlation. We look at row one in column two, that's the correlation between cylinders and displacement. That looks about to be maybe a high 60s, low 70s. And this yellow diagonal is just the variable correlated with itself. So if we actually want to double check and get the correlation between cylinders and displacement, we can go ahead and use pred association, row one, column two, and that gives us about a 69. We're going to go ahead and refit our tree, a random forest actually, using template tree, and our R squared reduced is 0.86. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this example because I want to show some additional resources that are available. So if we go back to the American University MathWorks portal, there is an on-ramp series. So we go ahead and open that one up. And this has a two-hour introductory tutorial for commonly used features and workflows of MATLAB. So it gives a lot of different information, a lot of details about different functions, and it ends with a final project. You can take this freely through AU. There's also, if we click on the other tab, there's some different courses. There's the on-ramp course listed here as well. There's some introductory videos. There are different documentations you can explore too. Let me go ahead and show you the different courses that are available. So if you're interested in deep learning, machine learning, go ahead and launch those courses. We have unlimited access to them. So it's a great way to learn some different techniques. We can also look at some different documentations and examples. Let's say we're interested in computer vision. We can go ahead and take a look at the computer vision toolbox. Look at feature detection and extraction and go through some of the different features for that. Within these examples, you can go ahead and use the code that's embedded within this to explore how these functions work. There's also, if you go to a community, there's different community supported information. There's different blogs and forums to learn more about MATLAB, as well as you can explore different topics and there's a file exchange as well. This concludes this video on how to use MATLAB. Happy coding.